It is extremely important for technicians to understand the function of engine computers and output controls. When the understanding of these components is inadequate, fast and accurate diagnosis of component malfunctions becomes more difficult. If you understand the function of these components, it is much easier to recognize and diagnose improper component operation. When a rheostat is used to control a five volt bulb and the rheostat voltage is one volt, a small amount of current flows through the bulb to produce a dim light from the lamp. If the rheostat voltage is five volts, higher current flow produces increased lamp brilliance. As the rheostat voltage is decreased, the light becomes dimmer. The rheostat voltage may be anywhere between zero volts and five volts. This is an example of analog voltage signal. Many of the input sensors in an engine computer system produce analog voltages. Analog voltage is continuously variable within a specific range. If a conventional on-off switch is connected to a five volt bulb and the switch is off, zero volts are available to the bulb. When the switch is turned on, a five volt signal is sent from the switch to the bulb and the bulb is illuminated to full brilliance. If the switch is turned off, the voltage at the bulb returns to zero volts and the bulb goes out. The voltage signal from the switch is either zero volts or five volts, or we could say the voltage signal is either high or low. This type of signal is called a digital voltage signal. If the switch is turned on and off rapidly, a square wave digital voltage signal is applied from the switch. Many computers have the capability to vary the on-time digital signals. A digital voltage is either on or off. A numeric value may be assigned to digital signals. For example, an off or low digital signal may be given a value of zero. And an on or high digital signal may be given a value of one. This assignment of numeric values to digital signals is called binary coding. The word binary means two values and in the binary coding system, the two values are one, zero and one. In an automotive computer, information is transmitted in binary codes. Conditions, numbers, and letters can be represented by a series of zeros and ones. Each individual on or off condition is called a bit. A computer transmitted the value of 011, 001, These groups of bits is called a byte. The computer can process bytes of information according to a program. Many computer input sensors operate in the zero to five volt range. The TPS as throttle uh, position sensor may be produce the following voltages. At close throttle, 0 0.6 volt. At past open throttle, 2.5 volts. And at wide open throttle, 4.8 volts. A numeric value may be assigned to each of these voltages by the engine computer. The computer may assign a value of zero for closed throttle and a value of 255 at wide open throttle. Because many input sensors produce analog voltage signals and the microprocessor in the computer operates on digital signal something must change these analog signals to digital signals. 
This job is performed by the input amplification and signal conversion chip in the computer. The input amplification and signal conversion chip may be called an analog digital converter. This chip continually scans the input sensor signals, assigns numeric values to the signal voltages, and then translates the numeric values to a binary code. Some input sensors, such as the O2 or the oxygen sensor, produce a very low voltage signal with a low current flow. This type of signal must be amplified or increased before it is sent to the microprocessor. The input amplification and signal conditioning chip also provides the necessary signal amplification. The microprocessor is a calculating and decision-making chip in a computer. Millions of miniature transistors and diodes are contained in the microprocessor. These transistors act as electronic switches that are either on or off. The components in the microprocessor are etched on an integrated circuit or IC that is small enough to fit on a fingertip. The silicon chip containing the IC is mounted in a flat rectangular protective box. Metal con connecting pins extend from each side of the microprocessor container. These pins connect the microprocessor to the circuit board in the computer. Various memory chips that store information and help the microprocessor in making decisions support the microprocessor. These memory chips are similar in appearance to the microprocessor chip. Computer memory chips are called by various names, including random access memory or RAM, R-A-M, read-only memory or ROM, R-O-M, programmable read-only memory, P-R-O-M, Electronically erasable programmable read only memory or EEPROM and keep alive memory or KAM. The memory chips store information regarding the ideal operating conditions of various components and systems, and the input sensors inform the computer about the engine and vehicle operating conditions. The microprocessor reads the ideal operating conditions in the memory chip programs and compares this information with the sensor inputs. After this comparison, the microprocessor makes the necessary decisions and operates the various components to meet the ideal operating conditions in the computer program. Computer output drivers operates mainly many different output controls, such as relays and solenoids. The computer contains a number of drivers or single transistors that switch the output controls on and off. The microprocessor commands the drivers to operate the output controls. For example, if the ECT or engine coolant temperature sensor or the uh, indicates the engine temperature is high enough to require cooling fan operation. The microprocessor commands the appropriate driver to ground the cooling for fan relay winding. This action closes the relay contacts that supply voltage to the cooling fan motor. This is the vehicle computer or PCM, which means powertrain control module or engine control units or ECU. Or others call it electronic control unit. In the early years of computerized vehicle control system, Toyota used to call it EFM or EFI rather, or 
electronic fuel ignition. The input sensor which provide information to the ECU or the electronic control unit or engine control unit in terms of voltage signals for decision making are crank angle sensor. This is for the crankshaft positioning sensor. The other one is manifold absolute pressure or MAP, MAP. Another one is mass airflow sensor or MAF, MAF. Throttle position sensor or TPS. Exhaust gas or oxygen sensor. This sensor is installed in the exhaust manifold or exhaust pipe to monitor the oxygen from the exhaust gas emission. Another one is NAC sensor. This is fixed on the engine block. And another one is water or coolant temperature sensor. And for the engine control system output controls, we have this, these are the output controls which controls the engine operation for which get the command and decision making from the PCM. Remember PCM? Power train control module. In terms of fuel injection, PCM decides the amount of fuel supply to the injectors for combustion. Ignition timing control, either speed control. This speed control serves as valve opening for air intake. When valve is slightly open, the engine would be on idle. When the valve is put on wide open, the engine revolution would be on full throttle. Automatic transaxle control. Transaxle trans is another name for transmission, which is for front drive cars. Fuel pump control and emission control. There are three gases emitted by the engine, namely CO or carbon monoxide, HC or hydrocarbon, and NOx or oxides of nitrogen. CO2 or carbon dioxide is a result of completely burned fuel from combustion. But this time we're gonna we're gonna focus on the input sensors only. A thorough understanding of input sensors provides the basis for fast, accurate diagnosis of these sensors. If you do not understand input sensor operation and typical input sensor voltage signals, diagnostic procedures for these sensors are often time consuming. Crank angle sensor or CKP function is used to monitor the position of crankshaft or its rotational speed. This will be the basis to control the fuel injection and ignition timing and other parameters. The manifold absolute pressure or MAP sensor is usually mounted in the engine compartment. MAP sensors are installed in the intake manifold. Other MAP sensors have a vacuum hose connected. MAP sensors have three wires connected from the sensor to the PCM. Remember PCA, power train control module. These wires are a five volt reference wire, a signal wire and a ground wire connected to the PCM. The PCM supplies a constant five volts through the reference wire to the MAP sensor. In some MAP sensors, the manifold vacuum is supplied to a silicon diaphragm in the sensor. When the manifold vacuum increases, it stretches this diagram, diaphragm and this action changes the voltage signal to the PCM. A typical MAP sensor provides a one volt sensor or one volt signal to the PCM with the engine idling and high vacuum supplied to this sensor. At wide open throttle, the vacuum decreases and the voltage signal from the MAP sensor is approximately 4.5 volts. 
A fuel injection system with the MAP sensor may be called a speed density system. In a speed density system, the PCM determines the amount of air entering the engine from the engine RPM signal or revolution per minute signal. And the MAP sensor signal, which indicates the density of the air in the intake manifold. The PCM must know the amount of air entering the engine to calculate the amount of fuel to be injected. The mass airflow sensor or MAF or MAF measures the mass of the air entering the engine. The MAF sensor is mounted in the air intake port between the air cleaner and the throttle body. Many engines have a hot wire type MAF sensor. A hot wire is positioned in the air stream through the sensor. An ambient temperature sensing wire is mounted beside the hot wire. When the ignition switch is turned on, the module in the MAF sends enough current through the hot wire to maintain the temperature of this wire at 200 degrees Celsius above the temperature of the cold wire. When the engine is suddenly accelerated, the rush of air through the MAF tries to pull the hot wire. When the module sense, senses the cooling of the hot wire, it immediately increases the current through this wire to maintain the wire temperature at 200 degrees Celsius. The module sends this increasing current signal to the PCM. In response to the signal, the PCM supplies the correct amount of fuel to go with the additional air entering the engine. The MAP signal informs the PCM regarding the amount of air entering the engine and the PCM provides the correct amount of fuel to mix with the air and maintain the proper air fuel ratio. MAF systems are much more flexible as compared to speed density and their ability to compensate for engine changes since they actually measure airflow instead of computing it based on program pre-program assumptions. And some MAF sensors contain a vane type sensor. This may also be known as vane airflow meter. In this type of sensor, a movable spring-loaded vane is located in the air intake hose between the air cleaner and the throttle body. This normally closed vane is connected to a variable resistor in the sensor housing. The PCM supplies 5 volts to this resistor and the voltage signal from the sensor to the PCM varies as the vane moves a contact on the variable resistor. When the engine is started, the airflow through the air intake opens the vane slightly. If the engine is accelerated, the increased airflow through the air intake opens the vane further and moves the contact on the variable resistor. This action changes the voltage signal sent from the MAF to the PCEM. The oxygen sensor is threaded into the exhaust manifold or exhaust pipe. OBD2 systems or onboard diagnostics 2 have oxygen sensors upstream and downstream from the catalytic converter. The upstream oxygen sensor is primarily used for fuel trim, while the downstream oxygen sensor is used for monitoring the efficiency of the catalytic converter. Fuel trim occurs when the computer increases or decreases injector pulse width based on 
the information from the upstream oxygen sensor. Fuel trim is necessary to maintain the proper air fuel ratio during engine closed loop operation. An oxygen sensing element is positioned in the center of the O2 sensor or the oxygen sensor. The oxygen sensing element is mounted in an insulator and contained in a metal case. Zirconia and Titania type oxygen sensors have a similar design but different operating principles. When the engine exhaust temperature is cold, a zirconia type HO2S or heated oxygen sensor does not produce a satisfactory voltage signal. When the engine exhaust approaches normal operating temperature, the sensor begins to produce a satisfactory signal. During engine's warm up, at engine temperature below 60 degrees Celsius, the PCM operates in open loop. In this mode, the PCM ignores the HO2S or heated oxygen sensor signal and the program in the PCM controls the air fuel ratio. In open loop, the PCM supplies a pre programmed amount of fuel depending on engine temperature. The PCM enters the closed loop mode. In closed loop, the PCM uses the HO2S or heated oxygen sensor signal and other inputs to control the air fuel ratio. If the PCM is operating in closed loop and the air fuel ratio is lean, lean means less fuel and more air. Nearly all of the fuel injected has been combined with air and burned in the combustion chambers and excess oxygen is left over. Under this condition, the exhaust stream flowing past the HO2S has high oxygen content. This causes oxygen to be supplied to both sides of the oxygen sensing element in the HO2S, resulting in a very low voltage signal which is around 100 millivolts from this sensor to the PCM. When this signal is received, the PCM increases the injector pulse width and provides a richer air fuel ratio. Rich air fuel ratio means more fuel and less air. Titania sensors are made from aluminum titanate, also known as titanium dioxide or TiO2. A titania type HO2S modifies a reference voltage whereas a zirconia type HO2S generates voltage. The PCM supplies voltage to the zirconia type HO2S and this voltage is lowered by a resistor in the circuit. The resistance of the titania sensor varies as the air fuel ratio cycles from lean to rich. From lean, which is more air than fuel, to rich, which is more fuel than air ratio. If the air fuel ratio is lean, the titania resistance is high, about 20,000 ohms of resistance and the sensor voltage signal is low. When the air fuel ratio is rich, the titania resistance is low, about 1,000 ohms of resistance, and the sensor voltage signal is high. Engine coolant temperature or ECT sensor and intake air temperature or IAT sensor both contain a thermistor. When a thermistor is cold, it has very high resistance. 
this resistance decreases if the thermistor is heated. Some ECD sensors have 35,000 ohms of resistance when the engine is very cold and the same sensor has less than 1,000 ohms of resistance if the sensor is at normal operating engine temperature. Two wires are usually connected from the PCM to the ECT or IAT sensors. One of these wires is a signal wire and the other wire is a ground wire. The PCM supplies a five volt reference through the signal wire to its sensor and the PCM senses the voltage drop across the sensor. When the engine is cold and sensor resistance is high, the voltage drop across the sensor may be 4.5 volts. If the engine is at normal operating temperature, the voltage drop across the ECT or IAT sensor is very low. The throttle position sensor or TPS has three wires connected from the sensor to the PCM. These wires are similar to the wires used on a MAP sensor. A five volt reference is supplied to both the MAP and TP sensors. The TP sensor also has a signal wire and a ground wire. The TP sensor contains a variable resistor that is connected to the throttle shaft. As the throttle is open, a sliding contact moves on the variable resistor. A typical TPS voltage is 0 0.5 volt to 1 volt at idle and 4.5 volts at wide open throttle. As the throttle is open, the TPS voltage must increase smoothly. A defective variable resistor may cause erratic TPS voltage and hesitation during engine acceleration. And the last sensor that we're gonna discuss is the NOx sensor. The NOx sensor is often threaded into the engine block or cylinder head. The NOx sensor contains a piezoelectric crystal. When the engine detonates or knocks, a vibration is present in the block and cylinder head. The NOx sensor changes this vibration to a voltage signal. When the PCM receives a NOx sensor signal indicating the engine is detonating, the PCM reduces the spark advance to stop the detonation. More power can be produced in an engine by increasing spark advance up to a limit. However, too much advance causes engine knock. Once an engine starts to knock, performance decreases and serious engine damage could result. NOC gets its name because it causes the air fuel to burn too rapidly in the cylinder. NOC causes a pinging noise that sounds like a small ball bearings bouncing in a metal. Mild NOC reduces power as the piston cannot move along with the burning air fuel. Knocking also increases emissions. Engine knock can destroy eternal, internal engine parts, including the pistons, connecting rods, valves, the, that would be the intake and exhaust valves, head gaskets, and spark plugs.